Do y'all ever just look at your reef tank and hate the way it looks for no particular reason? So you go on this whole rearranging spree? You know, those those rearranging sprees where you move around all of your corals and rock work? There's, there's super glue covering your fingers. The water has become cloudy from all of the coral glue and you just got stung by at least three bristle worms? Yeah, well, that was me last night and my 220 gallon reef tank now looks a lot different in terms of coral placement and I absolutely adore it. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys the little changes I made and talk a little bit about reef tank design using coral placement. You know I love talking design principles and how to make your reef tank look more beautiful, so I thought I'd explain the three primary things I took into consideration when changing up my coral layout and just basically my thought process and moving some of my corals around. So hopefully this video will be helpful helpful if you too are also on the verge of a total rearranging spree. So I thought I'd start this video off by talking about why I hated the way my tank visually looked to begin with, because I struggled so much finding out exactly what I actually hated about it that it drove me nuts. It starts with my aquascape, really. I love my aquascape a lot, actually, but I took a different approach to building this scape than I have ever taken in the past. In my previous tanks, I always took into account the existing corals I had when I was actually building my aquascape. I envisioned each and every spot for each and every coral when constructing it, and in that way, it was really easy to mentally visualize the final product I was working towards because, well, it, it was literally constructed with the finished product already in mind. However, when building my current aquascape, the one I have in my tank right now, I just honestly just had fun with it. You know, I didn't visualize anything and just made something that I thought was beautiful. And I still really love it and think it's beautiful, which is why I was so darn confused about what exactly I disliked about my tank so much. So for the past several months, I have been wrecking my brain, trying to figure out why, why was my tank so Bleh, you know? Well, after some reflecting, I realized that it was all because of my coral placement. I've come to find that with saltwater tank design, it's all about how your aquascape works with your coral placement. It's it's how the two work together that creates a visually interesting looking tank. I realized that the reason that I disliked my tank was not because the aquascape was bad or that my corals were ugly or anything. It was just that the two weren't in harmony with each other. So my aquascape is very intricately designed. It's really a scape that's meant to show off those small details of the rock. I mean, I pretty much unintentionally built an aquascape that was just made for acros and encrusting corals that show off, you know, the curvature and small details of the rock work. But I love a good mixed reef. You know what I'm saying? I love a good mixed reef tank. So I don't think I could ever really give up fluffy corals with tons of movement. And a part of me honestly believes that it would be against my interest to do so in the sense that I I think reef tanks should have a good balance between more static and non-static corals with tons of movement to make your reef tank really feel alive. So it was then that I realized I had some major changes to make with my coral layout and coral placement. Now, before I get into the changes I made to the coral layout, I want to preface this by saying that coral placement is tricky. You always have to place corals based on their particular needs for them to thrive. So in that way, you're quite limited when rearranging your coral layout because on top of thinking about what just looks good and what is visually appealing, you also have to take into account flow, light, nearby corals. And so in reality, you're always just left with a certain zone or just a few spots even that you can actually place that particular coral. But between deciding which of those few spots you should choose for your coral, there's a few design tricks that you can think about that will help you decide where's the best place. So there are three things that I took into consideration, generally speaking, when rearranging my coral layout. The first of those being viewpoint. Now, one thing that bothered me about my tank was that it looks so empty. Now, I know this is a really large tank and all, and it will take time to fill it up with corals, but I'm broke as hell waiting for the bar exam results, and I can't just go fill it up overnight like that, unfortunately. So I used this trick, which always, always makes your tank look more filled out. The trick is, is 
to focus on the viewpoint of you staring at your tank straight on. Looking at my tank before, there was a lot of empty spaces and a lot of corals that were just sitting behind each other. This wasn't a good use of the space. I mean, look at your tank straight on, right? And look at the empty spots. Try to rearrange the corals so that from left to right, there's as few empty spots as possible if that makes any sense. But don't place them all in a straight line either. I'm not saying place them all in a straight line. Alternate between some being in the background, some being in the foreground, some being in the front, etc., etc. I really hope this makes sense. But same thing goes for my left structure here. I moved around all of these micromusas that were sitting practically hidden back behind the hammer garden and I placed them more up front on these ledges that were empty. And I also placed this anacropora colony here to make better use of the space on these ledges. An anacropora, which by the Way, I honestly didn't even know I had because it grew together from me just tossing a bunch of pieces that I accidentally broke off when working on my tank, but that's a story for another day, I guess. <laughs> but now the corals on the left structure look way better, way better use of the space from left to right, and it just looks so much more filled out overall. Also, this little rock tower I built for my anemone, my anemone rock, uh, so it stays in place like a good little anemone, was just really bothering me for the same reasons. It just looked really empty. I mean, it was a tower. It just looked out a place devoid of corals there on the bottom like that. So to eliminate some of the empty towerness space here, I added some lovely branching Montipora that will just encrust and grow really nicely here. I love the effect that plating Monty gives off. It's a really phenomenal, like, mostly cheap coral that just can make your tank look really interesting. Anyway, I hope this whole using viewpoint to fill empty spaces to make your tank look more filled out thing makes sense. But if not, I can explain more thoroughly in a future video or something. Just let me know in the comments. Anyway, the second thing I took into consideration when rearranging my coral layout was better balancing the moving corals with the static corals. Looking at my tank before, it felt really overrun with corals that have a ton of movement. I switched a lot of things up so that there is a better balance now between the coral textures and their movement. Like my hammer garden here. This hammer garden is large, 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 and it carries a ton of movement. I needed to balance balance all of this movement that it gives off somehow. So I moved my old remnants of a Zoa rock that was hidden behind my aquascape previously. I moved that forward and now, now there's a nice balance between all of the movement that we have going on here with the Ghani and the hammers in this area with the contrast to this not really moving Zoa rock, right? It creates a nice contrast, you know? Same with this lovely plating Monty here that I placed next to my torch. The flow and the heavy movement of the torch here contrasts the static shape of the Monty and just, ah, Chef's kiss, so happy with this change. But off topic for a second, can we just admire how beautiful this Monty has played it out? I just love this shape here, this little, oh, uh, this boom, boom, boom. Ooh, really had to show it off, honestly. Um, also moving on to the right side, the right aquascape, balancing the movement of the torches here again. Gosh, I have so many torches. With the acros here, creates a nice contrast. And I did bring out the bubble monster and giant Duncan colony out from behind the aquascape. They're hiding back there. And I placed them here in this spot, which will be a nice contrast to the acros on this ledge here once they grow out more, of course. Now, the last thing that I took into consideration when rearranging my coral layout was balancing the visual weight of the corals. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, definitely check out my coral placement and aquascape design series because I go into this topic in depth and really explain it thoroughly. But basically, balancing visual weight is a concept that's used in design to create a sense of harmony. It involves uh, you know, distributing visual elements in a way that makes them appear equally weighted and balanced so that no element overpowers the other one, right? So in terms of reef tanks, what that means is think of it, think of it like this, okay? Imagine that you have a large, bold, colorful coral on one side of the tank. And then on the other side of the tank, you have several smaller, subtle corals on the other side, like on the sand bed or something, right? The visual weight of that larger, bolder coral will dominate the reef tank and it will create like an imbalance in your tank. To balance it, what you could do is you could introduce more smaller corals to the other side there so it carries the same visual weight or you can adjust the placement of all of the corals and until the overall the tank feels visually balanced. After moving around my corals, I feel like my tank looks a lot more balanced. The torches here on the right side really don't have another good spot in the tank to stay because of their needs for light, flow, etc. But how do I balance their movement? 
by placing the hammer guard in here in this spot, see? And how do I balance the size of the torches on the right aquascape? Because they're big torches, you know, with the additional Zoa rock that extends the left structure out. See, it's just, it's just like a seesaw. It's just like a seesaw. Yeah, picture your tank like a seesaw. Every coral you add on one side must balance the corals out on the other. Now that doesn't mean they have to be the same size. Don't get me wrong here, y'all. It's just the same visual weight. And it's important that you understand that distinction for this to make sense. Check out my video if you still don't understand what the heck I'm talking about right now, but anyway. Looking at my tank again, I had these very large, very fluffy corals that were hidden behind my aquascape that I wanted to bring out. Where could I place them to balance the visual weight of these gold rasta hammers on the other side of the tank and the anemone rock right next to it, which takes up a lot of visual weight if you look at it. It's kind of chonky, chonky area there. Place them on the other side, of course, right? You're balancing the visual weight. I mean, duh. I mean, what was I even thinking before with what, with, what, with the way my corals were placed? I mean, come on. Anyway, <laughs> once I got to moving all of these corals around, the more I realized that the space here between the two aquascapes just had to be empty. You know, I look at the tank now as two balanced sections, the left side and the right side. And by removing all of the corals from this center area here, it almost creates a contrast between the left side and the right side using negative space that I think really enhances the overall look of the tank. It also kind of emphasizes my rock work, like it creates contrast between the two structures that gives my aquascape that attention it deserves in terms of structure. So really happy with that. Using viewpoint to make your tank look more filled up with corals and focusing on balancing movement and visual weight in your tank definitely makes a huge difference in the visual effect your tank gives off. I couldn't be happier with the little changes I've made to my coral layout and I really feel like my tank is starting to shape up. Hopefully the design concepts I applied in my head when rearranging things make sense to you guys. Definitely we'll have to make another one of my animated videos or something to cover this in greater detail in the future but yeah. Let me know what you guys think of the changes. I personally am so in love. I feel like the tank is really coming together. <laughs>